this is what we uh, covered before the break. So this is the um, essential uh, formula we, we discussed before the break. We're looking here at a one euro benefit a life insurance product. It's a whole life insurance. So there is no limit in the, in, the, in the duration of the insurance cover. We sell it to an X year old and we want to know what's the expected present value of this insurance product. Why do we want to know this? Because this will really be the technical basis for the premium uh, that our insurance company should charge to the policyholders in order to set up this uh, insurance product in order to, cal to collect uh, sufficient uh, premiums from the pool of risks to cover the, the misfortunes of the few and to, to cover uh, the losses that will be um, encountered on this insurance, uh, on this portfolio of, of insurance contracts. I got a, a very good question uh, during the break. So why do I write here the omega minus x instead of plus infinity? Well, omega in our life table is the highest age possible that an individual can reach. So if we look at an X year old, then the maximum future lifetime, uh, the maximum duration of the future lifetime is omega minus x. Huh? So often, instead of plus infinity, we could also write this omega minus x. It, it depends a little bit on how you prefer to write it uh, yourself. I will often write it with plus infinity, unless there is a, a clear boundary that I should take into ac account in my valuation of, of the product. But that's, in any case, where the omega minus x is coming from. Omega is the upper limit for the age, and then omega minus x is the upper limit for the uh, remaining future lifetime of an x-year-old. Good. So if I continue on the next sheet, well, what we did so far is we looked at um, one particular moment of our random variable z, right? But we can also look at any moment from this distribution of Z that we're interested in. And, in, and a particular interesting, uh, particularly interesting one is, of course, the second moment. Because combining the first and the second moment will allow us to say something about the variance of this uh, Z. Now, if you look at the second moment of this present value random variable, then you're looking at the expected value of Z squared, right? z is e to the power minus delta times tx, so you take the square of that guy, you're going to manipulate this expression, so what you see here is that you can use the same expressions as before, but instead of using a force of interest equal to delta, you should work here with a force of interest equal to two times delta. So that's what we're going to do. We can plug in again our law of the unconscious um, statistician, and um, we could say we could value this as the integral from zero to plus infinity of e to the power of minus two times delta times t, and then multiply it with the density function of tx evaluated in t. So that's how we can work here. The actuaries developed yet another symbol to denote this in uh, shorthand notation. So we see the same symbol as before, but we've got a two at the left-hand side at the top. And so this two refers to the fact that you should use two times the interest rate, uh, the uh, interest uh, force uh, delta. Yeah. So don't panic about all this actuarial notation. Uh, you will get used to it uh, by working through exercises, by working with the course material. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming in the beginning, uh, but really it's yeah, it's just a practical way of writing these things. So, so even if you, um, I mean, the essential step is to understand the valuation formulas, then work a lot with the, with the notation, and then you will be fine uh, uh, by the end of this course, uh, I'm sure. If we have first and second moment, we find the variance by doing the second moment minus the first moment squared. So this gives us the variance of our present value random variable, OK? We can do beyond this variance, we can calculate all kinds of probabilities so that we want to know about this random variable z. For example, what would be the probability that z is taking a value less than or equal to one half? Then you replace z with e to, e to the power minus delta tx. You manipulate the expression. You go to the distribution of tx because that's what we know. That's what we learned in the second chapter. 
So then you can evaluate your, your uh, survival function of Tx in this particular value to calculate the requested probability. And that's the same as writing this is upx, where the u is equal to log 2 divided by delta.